Um, as Jonas said, I'm Mitchell Volger, and I'm coming from University of Washington, and specifically Evan Eichler's lab. And I'm going to tell you about how we can use the hi new HiFi technology to better assemble segmental duplication, specifically in human genome. But first, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about what segmental duplications are. Segmental duplications are large stretches of sequence that exist more than once in a genome. So more specifically for human, they're defined as sequences that are over a kilobase pair in length and that share more se than 90% sequence identity to another region in the genome. Segmental duplications are very important in our genome. First, they're the source for the birth of new genes. Um, several gene families, such as Notch2 and Sergap2, have expanded in the human chimp lineage and are responsible or partially responsible for the expansion of our frontal cortex. Additionally, segmental duplications only make up 5% of our genome. However, they constitute 50% of the normal copy number variation we see. So if there's a difference between me and you, chances are it l in copy number variation, chances are it lands in this 5% of the genome. And then finally, segmental duplications contribute to genomic instability and therefore cause disease. One very common example of this is VCF syndrome, which happens in one in every 4,000 births. It's a segmental duplication-mediated disease on chromosome 22 that happens when there's a three megabase deletion and causes neurological uh, developmental issues. So to try to study segmental duplications, we do long read de novo assemblies. And so what I'm showing you here in um, orange and blue are contigs of a de novo assembly aligned to the human reference shown in this ideogram or carrier plot here. And what I've highlighted in red are segmental duplications. And we can resolve many segmental duplications by using long read uh, technologies. However, when we look at where the ends of our contigs lie, we find that 90% of our contigs in a human genome assembly end in a segmental duplication. So they're clearly still very problematic for our assembly process. We know from previous research that using uh, PacBio CLR technology, so not HiFi, that duplications that are uh, greater than 97% identical tend not to be resolved. And what I'm showing you here on the left is all the segmental duplications in the human reference that are greater than 97% identical. So this is all the pairwise relationships. So this is what you're missing out on if you do a typical CLR assembly um, in the segmental duplication space. However, we're really excited about HiFi because if we push this 97% number up to 99 and we're only interested in the duplications that are 99% or more identical, these are the segmental duplications that remain. So maybe this is all that's left to solve in the HiFi assemblies and it's significantly reduced the complexity of the problem. So to test this hypothesis, we set out to do a de novo assembly of CHM13, which is an essentially haploid human cell line with 24x HiFi data generously provided by PacBio to us. So um, some highlights of this assembly, we were able to assemble this human reference in less than 5,000 CPU hours. This is one-tenth of the CPU time that it took us to do our previous CLR assembly of CHM13. In addition, the continuity is extremely similar to our CHM13 assembly with CLR. We have improved SD and repeat resolution, and we have extremely high quality. We estimate it as over QV40, and we don't need to use some of the slower polishing algorithms like Arrow and Quiver anymore. If you want any more detailed results on the things I'm going to discuss, you can find them at this bioarchive piece. But I'm going to go through some of the highlights. So here I'm showing another ideogram. Um, once again, the HiFi assembly is in the blue and orange contigs aligned to the ideogram. And I'm showing the CLR assembly, the old assembly, in green and purple. And what you can see, or what I hope you see, is that overall the continuity is pretty comparable, even though the CLR assembly has nearly three times as much data at 70x coverage. Additionally, the N50 statistics show that they're relatively comparable with a HiFi assembly of a 26 megabase N50, and the CLR assembly has a 29 megabase N50. When we move into SD space, we estimate that the HiFi res assembly resolves 74 megabases of segmental duplication, as compared to 56 for the CLR. This is nearly a 30% improvement in the amount of segmental duplications that are resolved. Additionally, 
I want to remind you that 74 megabases is, is the size of a like small human chromosome. This is not some insignificant amount of sequence. This is a really important sequences and they constitute quite a large fraction of our genome. To test the accuracy of uh, the de novo HiPi assembly, we or any assembly, we use back sequencing. So backs are small 200 KB inserts that come from a human genome library and you can sequence and assemble them individually at extremely high read depth to get a very accurate contig. So we created 31 backs, and we sampled the quality value of these backs as compared to our de novo assemblies for both CLR across the top here, these are the 31 different backs in a histogram, and HiFi down here. And what you'll see is that the overall median QV increases significantly from 42 to 45 in the HiFi assembly, but what's much more important is that in the HiFi, or sorry, in the old CLR assembly, we required Illumina polishing to get this kind of QV value. We've now exceeded this QV value significantly without any Illumina polishing. This is just HiFi and Recon polishing, so it's also faster polishing. One final point about quality in the HiFi assembly, every single one of the errors was an indel error. There are no mismatched bases. So it's completely reduced the sequencing error space down to just indels. So if we can teach our assembly algorithms to take advantage of this, maybe we can do some much more powerful assemblies, knowing that we're only going to see indel errors between reads. So now I'm going to talk about some updates we've had since uh, our bioarchive piece. We've generated an additional 20x HiFi data for CHM13, and we've used this to make our 45x HiFi assembly of CHM13 and then I'm going to talk about a piece of software I previously developed, Segmental Duplication Assembler, or SDA, and how it's been improved to now handle HiFi data. And then finally, if I have time, I'm briefly going to talk about um, some validation of the telomere to telomere uh, consortium efforts that we, I've done with HiFi. So once again, I'm showing an ideogram. Uh, now on the top is the 45X HiFi assembly, and on the bottom is the 24 HiFi. 24x HiFi assembly. And what I hope you see immediately is that the new assembly is significantly more contiguous. In fact, the N50 goes up by nearly 11 megabase pairs to 36 megabase pairs. What's interesting about this is that the SD resolution between these two genomes is virtually identical. So the regions that are being resolved by this additional coverage are almost all, always because the coverage dropped out and the assembler didn't have enough data to work with. And now that it has enough data to work with, it can go through these regions with ease. This makes um, 20x HiFi data assemblies really good candidates for scaffolding, because a lot of the joins that you can make can be done in simple regions and will easily come together to produce much more contiguous assemblies. So uh, many segmental duplications are resolved um, in HiFi assemblies. However, there are many that are, remain unresolved. And one way that uh, segmental duplications present themselves are as collapses in the de novo assembly, where you have one copy of a segmental duplication in your de novo assembly, but many in your genome. And this can be visualized in a read depth profile, which is what I'm showing here. So over here, we have unique sequence. And then as we move on, our read depth profile jumps up to three and two X copies of this sequence. Over here, I'm showing the, in black the most common base at any given position, and in red, the second most common base. So in unique sequence, you can think of this as sort of the coverage, and then down here, this is sort of the sequencing error. You're randomly getting a G instead of an A at a particular position in a couple of your reads. However, as we move into duplicated space, these variants in red that are at high frequency are variants that exist between the different copies of duplication. These are paralogous sequence variants that potentially distinguish the different copies of a duplication and may allow us to assemble them better. So one thing I want to highlight is how easy it is to see paralogous variation in HiFi data. So on the left, I have a collapse of one of my favorite genes, Notch 2, in a CLR assembly. And on the right, I have the same collapse over the same coordinates, but with HiFi data aligned. And what you can clearly see in the HiFi data is all five copies of the duplication. You have the the variants that are common only to one copy of the duplication, variants that are common amongst two copies, three, four, and five, et cetera. So you can clearly isolate the prologous variation that comes from each set of duplications. Additionally, this can be thought of as evolutionary time. 
The variants that you see low on this plot are the newest variants that exist in only one copy of the duplication. And as you go up, evolutionary time goes backwards, and you have older and older variants that are common to more copies of the duplication. And we think this is going to be really exciting for helping us tease apart these duplications. So um, previously, I told you I developed a method called Segmental Duplication Assembler, or SDA. Um, it used to only work with HiFi, but now it also, or sorry, it used to only work with CLR, but now it also works with HiFi, and you can find the updated branch that handles HiFi here. Um, to briefly describe the process, um, it takes de novo assembly contigs, it aligns reads back to these contigs, it finds regions of collapse, and then it identifies the prologous sequence variants, those little red dots, it phases them into groups, and then it creates separate assemblies for each copy of the duplication. So some really high-level summary assault results. In the HiFi assembly, I find 17, point, uh, 17 megabases of collapsed sequence, and I'm able to translate that into 52 megabases of sequence using SDA. In the CLR assembly, I'm able to find 18 megabases of sequence, and I translate that into 67 megabases of sequence. So currently, CLR is performing slightly better with SDA, but um, I'm looking to do improvements to bring these numbers to become more comparable in the near future. However, one region where we're seeing great improvements with HiFi and SDA is in really high copy number duplications, and I'm going to pick, uh, focus on one here, and that's Nuclear Pore Interacting Protein, or NPIP. Um, NPIP is a great ape-specific expansion. Um, it's a gene that exists in about 30 copies on chromosome 16 in humans, and 93% of the changes that have happened in human and chimp are non-synonymous. So this is a gene under a huge amount of positive selection, and we know almost nothing about it because it's very difficult to assemble because it's such a high num copy number duplication. This is what its coverage profile looks like in the de novo assembly. You can see that it has almost 700x coverage corresponding to 25 or 30 copies. So it's very challenging to tease apart. However, using uh, SDA for HiFi, I'm able to parse this duplication into 31 different copies. Of those 31 different copies, I'm able to get 26 partially validated assemblies based on coverage. They look like they have unique coverage. And then we have a partial li back library that's able to s officially validate 19 of these. This is compared to the old CLR assembly where I applied SDA, and I was only able to get 12 assemblies out, period. So I've nearly, uh, I've more than doubled the number of NPIP copies we'll be able to study. Um, finally, I'm going to talk about the T2T -T assembly of chromosome X, and specifically the gauge locus. So for those who don't know, um, the telomere to telomere consortium is using CHM13 and ultra-long ONT reads to build chromosome level assemblies. And uh, very recently, they completed a draft of chromosome X. And this was their initial assembly of a region called GAGE. GAGE is a tandem duplication that spans more than 200 kilobases. And they sent this to me for QC, and I told them that they hadn't assembled GAGE because I see clear indications of collapse and regions that have absolutely no coverage. So what we discovered is that um, out of the box, their assembly, the regions that have no coverage were just of such poor quality that the reads that should go to those regions would instead map to other regions. And we're able to easily and quickly identify this problem with HiFi data. And with their help, we developed a new polishing strategy that was able to convert this version of gauge with the assistance of HiFi into this version of a gauge. And this is really important because gauge is a gene. We want to be able to build gene models over these regions, so they need to be very high sequence accuracy so that we can tell the differences between these tandem copies of this duplication. Um, so some of my conclusions, I think de novo hi-fi assemblies are fast, accurate, and contiguous. And I want to put a special emphasis on fast. It is so much easier to deal with a hi-fi assembly than a traditional CLR assembly. Um, Hi-fi assemblies resolve significantly more segmental duplications, and with SDA, we can resolve some of the highest copy number of segmental duplications in the genome. Finally, I really believe that Hi-Fi is the only standalone technology for de novo assembly. If you don't want to do any kind of Illumina polishing, I think it is truly the only option. Um, my future directions are to work on further developments uh, in algorithms for using Hi-Fi in segmental duplications. I'm also particularly interested in making haplotype-resolved 
assemblies of genomes and specifically segmental duplications. And I think HiFi will be the only technology that will be able to address this. And then finally, I'm interested in um, continuing to assist the T2T consortium with their chromosome level assemblies using HiFi data. And with that, I'd like to thank uh, a lot of people, um, specifically Evan Eichler, my PI, for letting me work on this project. Glennis Logsdon is a postdoc in the lab who uh, gives me a lot of assistance. We've worked on all of these projects together. Philip Deschuk is a graduate student in the lab who is characterizing MPIP, but specifically using ISOSeq, looking for the transforms, uh, transcripts of ISOSeq and ISOSeq. And then at PacBio, I'd like to thank everybody who helped us with the bioarchive piece and HiFi data, but particularly Aaron Wegner. He gave a lot of really excellent advice and was a huge contributor on the paper. And then finally, I'd like to thank the T2T Consortium. Um, it's been a joy to work with them as well. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thanks.